And welcome back to the Spinner Rack, presented by Comics Remixed, episode 67. As always, I'm your host, Big B. Brian Adams, joining my co-host... Chocolate Morning Jr. Really? Really? Yeah, there's a lot of chocolate I had this morning. Like an Almond Joy? <laughs> no, man. Well, let's let's recap. I sat here before, because we're, we're an hour already into not recording. Yeah. Box of M&M's. Box of Reese's Pieces, King Size Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, and a cola. That'll give anyone the, sh- the, the sharts. Yep. It's a good thing you didn't shart. No, I did not. Because I don't, I don't think my, I think you'd look funny in my pants, that's all I'm saying. That's, God, that came out. Whatever, I'm just going <laughs> to leave it alone. <clears throat> Take that as you will. All right, then. Um, so. Just stop, man. I'm done. I'm move, moving on. Um, the variant cover craze continues with Marvel, specifically. I know DC's done a lot this year, but this, it's all Marvel. Um, 92 variant covers. 1992. Not 92, right. but 92. Um, I actually have the picture pulled up to show you if I knew where I put my tablet. And I don't. But uh, some of them are going to be like uh, the Clone Wars on Web Warriors, um, Age of Apocalypse on All-New Wolverine, New Warriors on Nova, 2099 Universe on Spider-Man 2099, and so on. But as you can see, there's more there. Um, You know, like, I would credit this to the report that Marvel owns about 40% of the market share in retail on a monthly basis. That they constantly do variant covers and relaunches with number ones. Some of these look pretty good. Some of them look cool. I mean, I love the Spider Man 2099. They look, uh, I, I like the, yeah, totally. The Hulk looks good. Mm-hmm. The Scarlet Witch looks good because it's Mephisto. Um, like the Guardians look good, both of them. The Thunderstrike on the Thor cover. Mm-hmm. I like they're going old school Drax. They got Liefeld coming through Deadpool. Yeah. Um, um, okay. I'm okay. Well, they did the uh, Maximum Carnage for uh, the Carnage book. That's good. Mm-hmm. All new Wolverine. I see what you did here. This is uh, this was right after Age of Apocalypse when they came back. Was it? Yeah, when Wolverine was like living in the in the wild, the bone claws. Right. And he had, like the bandana mask. Like weird pirate Wolverine. Yeah. And then, like you had shaved head Bishop Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Or, excuse me, shaved head Bishop. <laughs> shaved head Bishop. Yeah, Wolverine. I don't know why I said that. Uh, yeah, some good stuff here, man. Oh, okay, I see. Web Warriors number two. I see that. Mark Bagley. Mm-hmm. That looks good. Kane and Scarlet Fire. Okay. Yeah, that's a pretty sharp. So they're not bad looking covers. No, not at all. But what do you, do? You, do you, would you credit that? Putting out, you know, the rap covers, the... The hip hop covers were pretty cool. The These covers. Cool. Would you credit that to them gaining a bigger share of the market value over DC? Um, Because DC holds about, you know, I listed the numbers, I don't have them written down, it was in the upper 20%, but Marvel's got over 40. I think these covers are catering to people like us, because Mm -hmm. for us, well, I I mean, more my my thing, I don't know so much about you, but the 90s, well, everybody just knows in general, the 90s and comic books Mm -hmm. were a completely different uh, battlefield. You know, well, mean, that's like when that was when I got back in. Like, I was into comic books as a kid in grade school, and then I got off and I got back into high school in the 90s, is when I got back into them. So, I totally like, I'm good. These are pretty cool. They're cool, yeah. But at the same time, like, is that and the constant relaunching number ones that has to be some of the credit of their dominating the market share? I would assume so, specifically with the number ones, mm-hmm. because. It's just it, that's just the way it is. Whenever, excuse me, whenever there is a new number one issue out, the sales are going to spike that much more, even if it's just for the month. Mm-hmm. You know, and then number two, the sales drop. But I don't know. I can see. I just we've talked about this. I hate relaunches. You know, and I love the thing that's bothering me about the variants is that they're making up such a focal point now. Uh huh. And it's like they're almost taking priority over the actual storyline. Right. Um, if they were like 50-50 variant splits, you know, like cover A is regular, cover B would be one of these variants. Right. I'd have no problem. Kind of like how DC does it. Right. You know, but when you do it where these are all, and for the most part, they're what, incentive variants, aren't they? Right, probably. Yeah, probably. That's, that's what bothers me. 
because why am I going to pay X amount more for a cover when I can just wait and either just download the image and print it out myself and hang it on a wall? Right. You know, but I mean, like I said, looking through these, there are some very great artwork. Uh, yeah, the, uh, no knocks on the artwork at all. It, just, it all looks really sharp. I just love it. I mean, but it's conceptually, it's like just coming back to, know, um, like I said, the '90s were a big deal to me. So looking back, and you know, the whole clone saga from Spider-Man in the '90s, I am one of the only people I know that actually support that storyline. And like looking at this cover here, I love it. You know, and like the, the X-Men, this brings back the feels for me, man. Like this Daredevil one here uh, by Larry Stroman not really feeling it. He looks more like a beaver or like a gopher or something. Look at his face. Dude. The armored... Uh, yeah, the armored, the black and red there. Yeah, there's a lot of poor quality in comic book art recently. Mm -hmm. I love how they got Liefeld to come back into the Daredevil. And that's a rip-off of... Uh, not a rip-off, but a homage to X-Force issue 2, which was Kane's first appearance. Nice. And it's the exact same cover where he's on the ground and Deadpool's uh, running over him like that. And that's actually... Deadpool's second comic appearance. Very interesting. Yeah, I like this. They got the uh, Mark Sexier did the Doctor Strange variant, where it's like the Night Walk, the original. It's the Danny Ketch Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze, Blade, Morbius, and um, God, what was his name? Uh, Don't think too hard. That's gonna bother the hell out of me. Was that Doctor Strange? Like the '90s revamped version where he had. Uh, He's like the blue spandex with the black cape and he like a white mask, almost looking like a Rorschach kind of character. I think so. Yeah, that was Doctor Strange, wasn't it? Like yeah. just this weird, hey, let's make them extreme yeah. in the 90s. Like well, yeah, that was the 90s thing to do. <clears throat> yeah, that was definitely a, a 90s thing to go to the extreme. You know, you had extreme Doritos even. Yeah, that's true. I miss Cheetos Paws. Cheetos Paws? Yeah, you remember those? I do. Those are good. They tasted different. Apparently there's Cheetos fries out now. I don't care. Did I hear a pretty good? It's totally awesome. Seen? Hulk covers all homage to the, uh, <laughs> if I believe it's Punisher kills the Marvel Universe. Right. Oh, he's standing there with the pistols mm -hmm. and everybody's dead around. Some of these are definitely homages, like the Vision one, but I, I can't think of where, or where it's from. But you know, in, in my opinion, obviously, the, the Marvel fanboys out there are like, oh, this is why you know Marvel owns more of the market. Uh, that's why they're so much better than DC. But I think you have to really factor in relaunches oh yeah and I, I guarantee per that uh if, if you broke it down marvel's had more number one issues this year yeah than dc i agree that weren't even new titles they're just relaunching titles if dc put out new number one issues this year it's because they were completely new titles right you know uh, as we saw with um dcu they didn't it was like a soft relaunch that just threw away continuity and added some new titles the, the existing titles didn't relaunch number one which Marvel just keeps the love doing mm -hmm. like I feel like every year Marvel's relaunching Spider-Man X-Men Captain you know something's getting a new number one which is kind of just irritating to me because you all know when it comes back to the legacy numbers and I know we've said this before oh, when they hit those legacy that. numbers they will bring it up uh, Uncanny Inhumans number three. That's the uh, Heroes Reborn Iron Man. I didn't even catch that. Yeah. That's cool. That's how Heroes Reborn Mr. Fantastic too. Heroes Reborn. Oh. I bought all that stuff too, man. All so of it. I, yeah, of course. Dude. But see, you look back at it, like, man, that, that was the classic stuff. I mean, you might cringe at it now. The only reason we mostly cringe at it is that horrible Captain America artwork. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, that in general, it was, it was just good stuff, you know? It wasn't terrible. I mean, you know. It was good, man. Just admit it. It was, it was just good. a nice. It was an alternate take. And speaking of alternate takes, the Flash, the season of the Flash. You know, we were ripping through. Um, I gotta give them massive props to the Flash for King Shark. Yeah, I saw. I didn't see the episode, but I seen like all the. the I mean, images literally wow. less than thirty seconds on screen, but possibly the greatest thirty seconds in superhero television history, King Shark. What I can't understand. Wait, why was he only on screen that, that long? It was just um, apparently it was a budget thing. It was real fast. Okay. Like uh, in this season. So it, he wasn't like a. Uh, he a was like of just a. Uh, no, like it was really funny in the beginning of the episode. Uh, Patty Spiva Spivet. I don't know how the hell you say her name. Okay. But she's now been introduced this season as the love interest for Barry. She's working at with the uh, with Joe. She's actually Joe's partner. Okay. Um, she's on the Metahuman Task Force, or whatever. But she finds a tooth. And she has Barry test it. 
And I remember I looked over at Melissa when it happened. I'm like, oh, King Shark. And I figured that would be it, you know. And he it's ends like up, a nod, uh, dude. yeah, just a nod. But he actually shows up in full at the end of the episode and attacks Barry. Nice. Apparently sent from Earth 2 by Zoom to kill the Flash. Nice. But then the Earth 2 doppelganger of Harrison Wells shows up and shoots him and takes him down. King Shark. Yeah. Okay. Very quick, very quick and and uh, just straight to the point appearance for him. Just boom. Right. And I guess it had to do with, uh, they've come out and said the producer said it was really expensive to do that. I bet. And that they pretty much blew their budget for the episode just to do King Shark. I bet. Um, and that makes me wonder why... In Suicide Squad, why Killer Croc looks as bad as he does. Yes, exactly. Yep. I knew you were Why? That. Why couldn't they get... If because the, their budget went to Will Smith. If, I guess so. No, 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 no. Yeah, right? If, if, you know, they're paying to get jiggy with it, and continuity doesn't matter. Good storytelling doesn't matter there, obviously. Or actual looks. But I guess that remains to be seen, as no one has seen anything from that movie with that short little clip. But anyway, so the Flash and his cast are actually going to travel to Earth 2 sometime during the season. Nice. Where we're going to get to see doppelgangers of them. One of them apparently will be Joe West. And um, Jess L. Martin, who plays Joe, um, has come out and said that there possibly might be a musical angle to the Earth 2 version of Joe. And uh, this got some people cause excited which I didn't know until I did a little research for this episode, and now you'll know, and that's what everyone else listens. Apparently, Jess L. Martin was an original cast member of Rent. Yeah. Why would that get me excited? I didn't say it would get you excited. Oh. I said, you'll understand the musical ask why he said that. Gotcha. Excitement, no. I mean, yeah, I don't. Grant Gustin was on Glee. You know, does that mean I'm going to get excited to see him busting? So not really. Right. You know, I'm, I, I wasn't a big fan of the musical number of, of the musical episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but things happen. Um, I'll be interested to see if this is where we're going to see Killer Frost. Because it has been reported that Caitlin Snow will be Killer Frost. Mm-hmm. But they, it, to me, it didn't feel like, like her character works so well on the show that to turn her villain would be like a loss to the show. I see what you mean. So I feel like that's where we'll see the version of Killer Frost is on Earth 2. Um, speaking of CW superhero shows, the Arrow Flash crossover hits in early December. Um, part 1 starts in the Flash, Part 2 ends up in, in, in Arrow. This is is that going to be one of those things where it, it, they air the same week? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, totally. So Tuesday part one, Wednesday part two, which is awesome. Right. Yeah. No waiting. It's 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 great to get that stuff like that because you know waiting sucks. Oh, yeah. As a comic book fan, we all understand the wait, and it sucks. Um, apparently, this will be the introduction of Vandal Savage, and Hawk Girl, and Hawkman. Mm. Which to me is obviously a setup for Legend of Tomorrow. Yeah. And that goes without saying. Once you hear the title for the episodes, part one, The Flash. Legends of Today, Part 2 on Arrow, Legends of Yesterday. Is that obviously not a setup for Legends of Tomorrow? Is that a rhetorical question? Yeah, totally. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just, you know, yeah, totally. But uh, I'm super excited for that. Flash has been solid, as always. The season's been good. Um, Arrow's been good. Apparently, um, the Harrison Walls from Earth 2 is going to create a serum to make Barry faster that is going to test on um, Jay Garrick, who if you've been wa- following the Flash this season, when he showed up, did not have his powers. Who was the the Harrison Wells from the first season? Uh, reverse Flash. Yes. What Earth was he from? He was not actually, he was from here. He was okay. from the, the main Earth. Okay. He was not Harrison Wells, though. He was Eobog Thawne, who had come... From the past or from the future to kill Barry's mother. Right. And then when he fought with Barry, he lost his speed. Okay. And then um, he actually finds, or I'm not sure if he causes a car crash or just happens to be there when Harrison Wells gets gets in a car crash and Harrison Wells is 
Beyonce dies. Oh, so he was pretending to be Harrison Wells. But yeah, he kills Harrison Wells and assumes his identity. Okay. So it's not actually Harrison Wells. Now, is the the real Harrison Wells, is it the same actor? Yeah. Okay. It's the same guy. Which is nice because it set off this weird thing where no one trusts him because of what went down. Right, right. With their Harrison Wells. It's been a really, just, that show's just tremendous. Um, Arrow's been equally good now that they've brought back um, Sarah Lance and she's all crazy and murderously beating the hell out of people. It's, they're, they're great shows. Um, not so great, Supergirl. As we all know, Supergirl has premiered. It's been on for a few episodes now. Um, a lot of people who didn't see the pilot when it was leaked uh-huh. a couple months back, when they actually waited for the show, mm-hmm. uh, they were, and I talked to them about it, they were like, oh, they were surprised at how great it was. And I was like, yeah, but let's see how the rest of it is. Yeah, it was, I, I liked the pilot. First episode was good. Second episode was okay. Um, third episode, I felt like they jumped the, jumped the shark because they have now introduced the Another. dynamic of the CW superhero shows in that she has a new little team and they have a little secret base and uh, it's kind of I mean I, I know Flash really doesn't have that because it's the whole you know Star Labs thing right and the, the Arrow has the Arrow, Arrow Cave yeah. whatever you want to call it it's like they all have their own little uh, but they all have clubs. their own little club now and she's got like a computer hacker guy so it's just uh, kind of like that kind of disappointed me just this formula formulatic yeah formula. Like, why do they have to follow the same formula that the CW is using? Why couldn't it just be its own thing? Now, somebody was telling me that, uh, and this is why like, it kind of turned me off to it, that they've already introduced another Kryptonian on the show for Supergirl. Well, yeah, they have. See, that already? They have, like, already. No. Yeah, well, the whole concept is is that when her, when her spaceship or whatever pod that she was launched from Krypton crash landed... It also brought with it, because apparently the reason she gets here late was that when the explosion of Krypton happened, a rip in space-time sucked her into the Phantom Zone. Okay. And then her ship ripped out of the Phantom Zone when it arrived at Earth, and it brought back this Kryptonian prison with it, mm. which crashed on Earth and then re- released all these aliens, mm. among them one of them being her aunt, who was a, a, a rebel, I guess. Okay. Kind of like a Zod esque, but not. So, are they doing it where her ship coming to Earth was supposed to be because she was supposed to be here before Cal? Yes. And protect Cal? Yep. Gotcha. And but he then makes, she ends up showing up and, yeah. or late, and he's like, oops. And know, he made uh, a cameo in the last episode. Not Henry Cavill, though. Right? No. Okay. They, they didn't show him. They just showed, like, you kind of see him from the back, you see the suit. Okay. Like he was shows it the, the saber. Man of Steel suit? Um, yeah, it looked to be. Okay. It looked to be. There were no manis. Okay. But um, you didn't actually see him or hear his voice. So it was kind of like uh, Tom Welling in that final episode of Smallville, where you would see him dressed as Superman, but you wouldn't actually see him. Right. Okay. Yeah, I would. I would assume I actually never saw the last episode really? of Smallville. So yeah, no, Smallville was not my thing. Smallville. I know the book likes to compare these CW shows. To, he yeah. says that it's all Smallville. But I like hated Smallville, so I you don't, gotta go back and watch it. Yeah, I thought it was. That's good. what people tell me all the time. I have all ten seasons. Yeah, I binge watch. You should just borrow them to me. I should. You should. I should not. That would help me out. Netflix, baby. It's not on Netflix. Hulu. Unfortunately. YouTube. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't want to do all that. That was good. That's I like it. Yeah, but at the end of, of Smallville, he ends up donning the Superman suit, and every time they show Superman, like they were showing him flying. But it was like his face was a little fuzzy and you really couldn't tell. Like, it was like, see, like, is that Tom? Yeah, it's Tom. But you really nice. couldn't see his face. You know, so they always, they did it that way. So they kept their promise of you'll never see Tom Welling in the Superman costume. Mm-hmm. But, so they, you never did. But Until, you, you know, see he it. shows up on Arrow or Flash. Yeah, but you would see rumored. him, but you wouldn't see him. Right. You know? Wait, so, it's rumored, um, really? It's rumored, yeah, it's rumored. <sighs> so, also. Um, they should just, oh my God, they make me sick. Why don't they just combine, and we've said it a million times, the Flash and the Arrow universe and, hell, the Supergirl universe and just combine it with the big screen universe of Henry Cavell and whoever the hell Ben Affleck is playing with all these rumors. He's Batman. You know, it's just whatever. Christian Bale came out, and I'm not even, I didn't even have this on the list because it was so minute of a thing. Yeah, so minuscule. Christian Bale came out and said he has nothing to do with Batman versus Superman, nothing. That he's not involved in any way. 
and that Ben Affleck is Batman. Because I know there's all the Deathstroke rumors going around, and mm-hmm. well, that would be the biggest like it's just that's not it's not real. I don't see them sacrificing the popularity of Batman in a movie to just booster the reputation of Deathstroke. I don't see them. Yeah, doing no. That. Do I? But it would be like that would be like the grand slam out of left field nobody expected yeah. and now every fanboy would turn over and look at Marvel and be like okay what do you, you got you know like right now yeah, he's, no, he's totally. got you yeah. like what do you got and that's when Marvel had to step up so uh, November 30th on Supergirl we're getting our first look at the Red Tornado and it's creator Dr. Morrow I don't want to see it um, more stills have come out is it as bad as fighting? the one that you posted Dude, in looks blog horrible. on comicsremix.com it, yes yes where he looked like he was wearing a bunch of foam sponges. He looks horrible. He looks like a reject from Power Rangers. <laughs> it is the most awful <laughs> costume design I have ever seen. Oh, yeah, it's that just looks awful. Bad. That looks really bad. Like, I don't know what they were trying to do there, but no. Wow. And the sad thing is, is I've seen people online defending it and saying that it's just, it's just a loser jerk fanboys that can't get over themselves that are hating on the look and that there's nothing it's like no you can't it, pour it syrup on manure and call it pancakes yeah you can't you can't it just it looks terrible just terrible moving on to um the marvel side of the coin so are we done with the dc talk uh for the most, yeah, DC talks for much done. I gotta say though, I have I've noticed online a lot of people are saying due to the popularity of John Constantine appearing on Arrow, there's been I guess petitions or something like uh-huh. that to bring back Constantine's show again on a different network. But that's been going on since before he appeared on. Arrow. You know, I actually don't know why. Like I've talked about it the last time we were together, how I was excited about it. The episode was great. Mm-hmm. Like it felt like Constantine still. Okay. I mean, I know it's still Matt Ryan, who was the guy that played Constantine right, in, right, right. in the original series. If they don't bring that show to CW, they're just making a huge mistake. Really? Like, I really feel like, and especially with, like, I mean, they've got Supernatural, right? Yeah. Which is what on, it's like 12th season. It's totally huge. Dude, they have the fan base for Constantine already That's watching true. the show on their network. Two shows. In Arrow... Or, and I, I guess Flash, so three, and Supernatural. So, well... And wasn't, like, the yeah. Buffy show on there as well? Uh, Buffy was not on Channel CW. 9. No, Buffy was on, uh... Yeah, it was on WGN. Was it? it? Yeah. I thought it was on 50. I thought was it was it? on WPWR. That was, like, the repeats, like, once it went, uh, syndicated. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe went, you're right. Maybe it yeah, was Yeah, because that's where Spike was on, and Angel and Okay, you're right, yeah. you're right. It was GN. Yeah. It was WGN. So, okay, I wasn't even, I wasn't really counting, like, Flash and Arrow, because for me, Flash and Arrow, is that's a built-in audience that's going to watch Constantine. Right, that's what I'm saying. I was more thinking of, like, the... This is like you have already two groups of audiences that would watch your show. Yeah, totally. So if you've got a a huge pre-built audience for that show, you're not going to have the problems that NBC had trying to, trying to keep it going, or ABC or who it was. You're not going to run into those issues. So it would be a mistake for them not to not to do that. Right. Um, Jessica Jones comes out Friday. Are you ready to binge watch? Nope. Nope. I'm still watching Daredevil. Really? Yeah. So you're not excited at all about Jessica Jones Nothing, whatsoever? I mean, I'll watch it and it's got to, like, I'll give it two, three episodes. I mean, I'm going to watch the whole thing. But in order for me to be like, I really need to watch this, uh-huh. those first two episodes got to grab me in. And I say two because you always got to give it that extra one. The first one I always take with a grain of salt. But from everything I've seen in the trailers, nothing. You know, nothing Nothing has me pumped for Jessica Jones other than seeing Luke Cage, finally, uh-huh. and Purple Man and whatever else. Yeah, um, you know, I'll watch it. Um, I mean, I, like I said, I'll watch it. Um, knowing that it's going to tie into everything else, that mm-hmm. is the exciting part. But, I mean, just based off the trailers, it really doesn't look like much. So, did you hear that the new Spider-Man film... Starring Tom Holland, arriving in 2017, mm-hmm. will feature an unused villain. Unused villain, how? Meaning like someone Spider-Man. we have never seen cinematically. Mysterio. You think so? Who else is there? Craven the Hunter. Mysterio, Craven. Um, Moreland. 
He's been really big in the comics lately. But he's, I don't think they would go, I think they'd more, they'd go classic. Yeah. Yeah, Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin. Chameleon. Yeah. Kingpin, possibly, which I don't really see that because they use him on Daredevil, though. Right. But, uh, I, you know, or a combination. They could do uh, Mysterio and Craven. If you're going to put Craven with anybody, it's got to be Chameleon. Yeah. Because they're stepbrothers. Oh, are they really? Yeah. Huh. I actually I didn't know that. Yeah. Interesting. But, uh, you know, it's good to know that they're not going to go back with Green Goblin. Yeah. Or I'm, give us someone else that we've already seen, you know. I'm cool with them putting Norman Osborn in the movie as, like, a character that they build upon later. Mm-hmm. You know, but don't make him the, the focal point. Right. Kind of like how they were starting to do with the Amazing Spider-Man mm-hmm. movies, where Norman was there, but he wasn't there. Right. You know, do something like that, I'll be okay with. So you know he's involved. Right. You know. Um, I think Mysterio would be a great villain. I mean, give me the ultimate version of Mysterio. I'll be all right with that because obviously the fishbowl won't work. Right. But the ultimate version, his head was like almost like a hologram. That yeah, totally. Fire, kind of like Ghost Rider. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd be all right with if they did something that way. That would work. That you know, would work. Don't give me and a- as we've seen, they're not against, you know, using concepts and ideas from the Ultimate Universe. Because that's what the Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe is. It's a combination of both. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I'm cool with that. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm very excited for it. But, I mean, dude, the more I sit and think about it right now, we're in mid-November already. You know, we got one more episode of this left before we call it a, a season. But when we come back, Deadpool will have been released. Mm-hmm. Batman, Superman. <clears throat> I, I almost feel like there. we're going to have to Star do... Star Wars. We're going to have to come back and do a review episode of Star Wars in December. You we're going to so? have to, yeah. I don't think that there's any way that we can get through not sitting down and talking about Star Wars. Um, I, yeah, I'll give you that. I'm actually, uh, I got tickets. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, a f- uh, I guess you could call him a, fam- a family member. He, uh, his wife. Um, gotcha then. Her, bo- her boss, which I think is absolutely awesome that he did this, he rented an entire theater, not the building, but like a whole room, mm-hmm. and uh, he's doing it to help uh, underprivileged kids go see this movie. So oh, that's really cool. 25 bucks a ticket. It uh-huh. gets you, obviously, entrance into the movie. You get a popcorn, you get a soda, and everything that's left out of that 25 bucks, which you really imagine isn't much, right. goes to getting renting the bus to get these kids there and the kids their tickets and stuff like that. Well, that's cool. So, Vinny, Shemeli, and I are going so far. Nice. And we're like, dude, that's cool. 25 bucks, and, you know, we get the movie, we get the popcorn, and we're helping the kid to go watch the movie with us. And then they're supposed to have cosplayers there, the members of the 501st, a bunch of stuff. It's supposed, But it's all, like, private for us only. That's cool. The only the only bad part about it is it's going to be on the 19th, the day after it comes out. Oh. So I have to stay off social media. Yeah, totally. Um, I requested the 18th off because I was going to go on midnight the 17th. Mm-hmm. You know, which actually ended up working out because the 18th, we're taking, we're doing all our holiday stuff. Right. So that works out. And then Saturday, the 19th, I get to go watch Star Wars, but I'm watching it in the city. And it's going to be like in the afternoon at 3, 4 o'clock. So it's all going to work out. Nice. I'm excited. I'm really excited. The more I, like, I don't want to watch the TV spots, but the more I see them, the more excited I get. I got one little last Marvel thing, and then I have some Star Wars stuff. Let's so. do it. I want to talk Star Wars now. <clears throat> so James McAvoy. Was on a Bravo late That's, night talk uh, show. Xavier from uh, yes, okay, the Pro, first yes, class movies. exactly. So he was on some show called What Happens Live or something like that on Bravo, and he was asked what he thought was the worst mutant power, and he took a big dump on Jubilee. <laughs> he pretty much said, "I quote: Fireworks shooting out of your fingers kind of suck." A lot of people have said that. And I don't think, yeah, I mean, who doesn't agree that Jubilee's got, like, the worst power set you think in the so. history of mutants? You think so? Well, one of them. Okay, here you go. Cypher. Yeah, but, I mean, whatever. All he did, he knew every language. Yeah, that's not, that's, that's better like than... C, that's the C-3PO of the Marvel no. Universe. I mean, it would be more useful to know every language than it would to shoot fireworks from your hands. You think so? Totally. You don't mess with drunk people? Yeah, Shoot fireworks. Yeah, I got, whatever. Make a killing on the Fourth of July. Yeah. Okay. It's still help blind your enemies. You're telling me if you had a choice of being able to communicate with every person on this planet versus making little sparks fly from your hands, you take the little sparks. Dude, I don't want to talk to half the people I know in English already. Okay, that's a good point. That's a good point. That you made a fantastic point right Thank there. Thank you. So, yeah. moving on, Star Wars. 
Like, what? You need me for your kid's birthday party? Yeah, 300 <laughs> bucks an hour. Unlimited fireworks. Oh, I forgot to mention that Jubilee is coming to be in the upcoming Apocalypse movie. Yeah, everybody Played knows by that. Uh, Lana. Yeah. Well, okay, Those whatever. pictures that leaked a long right. time ago. Good stuff, though. Uh, yeah. Is she going to be shooting fireworks out of her fingertips? No. Or is it going to be the cheesy apparently, vampire? Apparently, I saw some... On, I read on some website that she's going to be, I, and I quote, a mistress of electricity and less a human firework. I don't even know what the hell that's supposed to mean. Moments like this, I wish we still filmed. Yeah. So people could see the look on my face. Yeah. <laughs> because I know there's a look. Yeah, there's a, there was definitely a look. So Star Wars. So we got a run time for the movie. Yes, let's talk. Two hours, about. 15 minutes. Really? Yes, two hours and 15 minutes. 15 you know, or 50? 15. Hmm. 250. Woo! Would have been great, but no, just 250. Um, Abrams came out and talked about uh, the Star Killer base. Um, it's seen in the posters. Okay. Um, it is definitely a uh, like the new version of the Death Star. Right. Just way more powerful. Okay. People are assuming that because it's called the Star Killer. That like you know all that the, was Luke's original. Yeah, the, uh, there's all the rumors going on that Luke has went to the dark side. That Luke's going to be the villain. That too. And I, I, I just heard I that, that. Uh, the first order. You know how these first order stormtroopers and everything. Uh -huh. it turns out the first order is the death of Luke Skywalker. That is what officially the first order is because all these troopers now have been programmed since birth. They've been actually raised. They're not. I don't know if you know. They're not clones anymore. They're well, yeah, like no, raiders. yeah. So well, the stormtroopers weren't clones. No, no, no. Uh, the, yeah, because they were, like, all the cloning stuff was yeah. destroyed. Um, so, all the troopers now, the recruits, they're recruiting them at birth. And from birth, they're brainwashing them to, uh, the, as, they're brainwashing them into them, the first order. And the first order is death to Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker is the enemy. Okay, so then how can Luke Skywalker be the villain? I don't know. If I keep hearing, like, there's so many stories. And then people are saying that, uh, uh, Kylo Ren uh -huh. is the brother of Rey because Rey and Kylo are the twins of Han and Leia. Yeah, but do people realize that the, the twin thing is expanded universe, which DC has come out and said that the expanded universe does not is not canon. The only thing Marvel, that, not DC. Uh, did I say DC? Yeah, I might actually say Disney. Oh, I don't know why I said DC Disney. And then there's also um, there was a, a picture. Because who the F is Marvel? They don't guy, own Star Wars. There's a guy, a character, that looks strikingly like Kylo Ren. Uh -huh. And it says, uh, don't forget Darth Vader had an apprentice. This is him. Looks very striking, or very similar to Kylo Ren. Like, eh, Which he does. And it's like people keep saying that, you know, Luke Skywalker's Kylo Ren. That, that's what I thought. They've straight out come and said, Adam Driver is Kylo Ren. Right. The actor. That's, so it's obviously it's not... Like, I don't know, there's all this, like, theory, these fan theories have just gone wild with it. The biggest one is uh, Finn being Lando's son. I've, I read that. Now, I read that, that they, uh, they say that happened because of uh, a puzzle that's being sold on Amazon. Yeah, I saw that. No, they, no that's not. Because out of all the stuff that has Star Wars information mm -hmm. on it, for, like, toys and everything, why would they go ahead and put that on there, on a freaking puzzle? I don't know. Of all things. And plus, it wasn't Amazon. It was yeah, like it, wasn't, a it, was a, it was a third seller, a yeah, third-party so. seller. And they're saying that their price, based on all the other prices of people, it's considerably higher. Yeah. So they're, it's probably just someone's like, oh, let's just lie and say this to try and, you know, right, move right. more $10 puzzles for 100 bucks. Yeah, no, I don't think it is. They just, you know, why can't there just be other African-American people in a galaxy far, far away? Yeah, I think... While it would be interesting if he was, I don't think he's a bad move. There's no. also been rumors that people think that it was that it's Leia and Lando's kid. No, that would make Leia. That would just like that so would make Princess Leia a hoe. Badly, big time. Speaking of Leia, what do you think now that Disney has put their foot down and said no more Slave Leia merchandise? Why? They're trying to do the Slave Leia with WWE. Try to do the Hulk Hogan. It's ridiculous. So now all of a sudden, all those Power of the Force Slave Leia figures that yeah. you see at, in two dollar bins, yeah. 50, 60, 70 bucks. It's ridiculous. Like, come on, man. Slave Leia, you know what? I could see halting production, further production on anything like that, but don't try to. Like it's uh, don't pretend, pretend don't it like it's you know it's back to those 
it's those those social justice warriors again. Gotta love them. And you know they're like, oh, you SG know, dubs. They, they're taking away from the character by doing this. Mm-hmm. Because do they fail to realize that Slave Leia freed herself from her captor and killed him right. with her chains? Right. You know, this isn't just some puff of a woman. Right. This is Princess freaking Leia. She's a badass. No. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I thought about going out and grabbing a... I bet you did. A, you a black figure. I was like, I'm going to get one of these. Just put it away just in case. But you scalper. I didn't. Yeah, because I scalp. Look at you, you... <clears throat> um, <laughs> Dom Hall Gleason, who plays uh, General Hux, has come out and spoken about his character a little bit. Um, he said on Hux that uh, you don't get that high up in your in your life that quickly unless you're pretty ruthless. Here, I got a question for you. Yes. What do you think is going to be the what people are calling the Luke, I am your father moment of this new movie? Do you think it'll be the reveal of who Finn and Rey are or yeah. who Kylo is? Which one? <sighs> well, who says it won't be all three? That's true. Don't you think that'd be too much? Can it be too much at this point? So this true, cause this Star Wars is something had big. Luke or Vader revealing that Luke he was their dad. Then you found out that Luke and Leia were brother and mm-hmm. sister. You know, like, eh, I don't know. Then you found out who Obi Wan really was. We need old man, old man Kenobi. Yeah, we need the payoff because the prequels were so bad. Prequels weren't bad, man. Well, they weren't good, man. But they weren't as bad as people. You gotta remember, the original three Star Wars movies were made for kids back in the seventies and early eighties. So those were like, oh, those are great. Yeah, I don't believe that at all. I don't believe they were that. made for kids, man. I don't think so. And then the prequels of the. The, the, the actual prequels were made to sell toys. <laughs> the same thing when, in the in the beginning. Yeah, but that, the but that didn't exist as, in the as beginning. Big as it was, it, it didn't exist in the beginning. George Lucas created the toy market. Yeah. Okay, he created movie merchandising with Star Wars. I give you that. When he did the prequels, it was that like, well, people are friggin' crazy thirsty for more stuff, and I gave them these stupid. Special editions, and they went crazy. Let's do, let's just pop some movies and toys. No, I, mean, I don't think that's toys. How I think a toy would work. Because why would you start <clears throat> in 1977 with an episode four, knowing that eventually you were going to go back and tell the story? I don't think he knew that eventually he was going to go back and tell the story. I do. I think it came think down he, to, like, He had money. an idea for it. And just put it to the side, like, okay, yeah, if but this ever happened, I would expand on it. His, it. his original idea for it wasn't even what it was. That's his original true. idea, he didn't even intend to have any humans in the friggin' movie. It was supposed to be just C-3PO and R2-D2 as the main characters. That would've sucked. That would've sucked. Beep, 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 and as we all know, George Lucas is not any kind of a great filmmaker. Like, George Lucas is the reason we have the Michael Bay's of today. That it's more about Flash. Than it is substance. Yeah. You know, that was my problem with the pre... The, 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 of course you do. That's my problem with the pre... What is that supposed to mean? I don't know. No, no. I, I was just being an no, ass. Now I gotta... Here. No, I was just being an ass. Co- I was just being an ass. It didn't mean anything. All right. What it didn't mean? mean nothing. I was just being an ass. You like Transformers, right? So, of course, Some you're, of them. you're a Bay fan. Do I gotta go break another one of your toys? Yeah, don't do that. The next time I'm in your whatever the hell you call it, I'm gonna take a shit on something. Dude, that was a total accident. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It was. You, you still owe me. <laughs> it's that DC collectibles quality control. Right yeah, seri- No, that's no, that's no BS right there. Like all no. I did was like, man, whatever. You I know, the my issue with the prequels is you. Well, that's because they every time my kid hits the case, they fall down like dominoes. Those movies sucked because it was a lack of story and it was lack of well con- like you created the original Star Wars dude don't you have the foresight to make sure your story matches up well because there are conversations that go down in the original trilogy that don't match up to things that happen in the prequels in the prequels hmm. like just the way things are set okay and and then the story just sucked it was like I like the theory that Qui-Gon was actually a Sith. That's a, that's a great theory. That's a great fan theory. Um, I didn't appreciate, like, the... Instead of pushing the for, story forward and giving us more backstory, really, that we wanted, he tried to create, like, this whole new adventure 
and like all this swashbuckling crap and like putting people in peril when you knew there wasn't like, like the thing that makes peril relevant in any kind of entertainment is that you don't know if the hero's going to make it through. That's true. But if you already know that this person has things that they have to do, obviously, you know, they're not in any real danger. Right. So you had that whole scene in episode two where, where Padme is in that thing and it's like, oh, is she going to get lava dumped on her? Oh, no. Of course she's not. Because she hasn't had the kids yet. You know this, You know what I mean? Right. There was, and then there were so many questions left unanswered and things that True, you wanted to see. What if the lava would have fell on her? And it wouldn't have killed her, but it would have like, horribly disfigured her. Plot yeah, twist. Yeah, that would have been stupid. Yeah, see? But it would have been like a paradox. Though. You know, it's funny that we're talking about things that, you know, why this happens or why mm-hmm. that happens. When I was at Target this morning, this lady was looking at the pops. And she was like, oh my gosh. She's like, you never... And she, like, she said, oh, my God, but and then she looked around, and I was standing there, and she started laughing, like, like I caught her in an embarrassing moment or something. Right. And she goes, I've never been here where I've seen them fully stop. I'm like, okay. And she grabs the C-3PO, and she's like, why is his hand red? I was like, I don't know. That'll be revealed in the new movie. And she's like, I have to get this. I'm like, okay. That's and another she- thing, man. People have went, like, I had this little piece about the dude talking about General Hawks, but who really cares because we don't even know anything about that character yet because we haven't seen I saw his action figure today, too. This is my issue. You have such a rampant and crazy, like, feeding frenzy for Star Wars merchandise, and no one's seen the movie yet. Mm-hmm. How do you know that the movie's not going to suck? Come on, look at that trailer. Does it really look like it's But I'm just suck? saying. Yeah, but did, did you think episode one was going to suck? I had no thoughts going into it. I really did not. I was excited. Star Wars, I just want to watch it. I was excited. And then I got in the theater, and an hour and a half later, my excitement was dead. My letdown with episode one was the underuse of Darth Maul. I expected to be a lot more Darth Maul. I was like, this is going to be the dude. And in that... And they just punked him. Yeah, they punked him bad. And I was like, that's it. That's what killed episode one for me. It wasn't the kid who played Anakin. Because he was a kid. You really can't fault kid actors for not being an Oscar-nominated, you know, skilled. Yeah, people were super dicks about that kid. That kid didn't bother me. Jar Jar didn't bother me. Oh, Jar Jar bothered the hell out of me. Jar Jar didn't bother me because he served his purpose. He was just some annoying. And Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan treated him as such. He was just some annoying, annoying life form that was there. He served his purpose. And he was there for the younger audience to, to, to latch on to. Okay, but you have to admit that fan backlash against Jar Jar was so harsh. That's why they kept him in the background for that, the other ones. That the end, he was just there. And that's like, why they made him the catalyst for things really going south. What do you mean? Well, there's a part in, in uh, I think it's episode three, okay. where the Chancellor's talking about, you know, this needs to happen. Like, someone needs to put this idea forth in the Senate because it can't come from me. And it's got to be, like, a senator that's willing to, like, take a risk. And so they basically put the whole creation of the creation and the possibility of the M- the Empire happening on Jar Jar Binks. Oh, I see what you mean. They use him as a scapegoat. Totally. Gotcha. And I feel like Lucas did that because there was such fan. Like, so, okay, they I hate him. Let's give him a reason to hate him. Uh, caught that. So it was just poor storytelling, and he did a lot of, it was a lot of pomp and, you know. But I, like I said, I don't even think he killed, him, killed it to me. Oh, I, don't, I don't think he killed it. I think it was the, over, I, I think that the was, overuse of special effects and the lack of solid, consistent storytelling. I think Jar Jar was, the, prequels, was to me, anyway. the the thing that fanboys had to pick, like, what do we hate about this? We need a reason to hate this. What do we hate? And there's Jar Jar. Okay, he's the reason yeah, this movie sucks. I, just, I think I if you wanted a real reason you know? to hate Phantom Menace, is that it was, instead of a substance, good Star Wars movie that effectively tied into the story and made you want more, it was a two and a half hour commercial for toys. Boom. It worked. I bought a few of them. Mic drop. So did I. I got rid of them right away. But anyway, so that's all I got for this week. We just totally went on a, on a Star Wars tangent. I'm totally watching all six movies before the new one comes out. I'm not. I am. I, I'll, I've, I've seen them enough in my life. I don't need to see them I, I don't want to. Plus, I've just watched the prequels recently with my kid. There so. you go. Well, I'm, I mean recently. I'm excited like me, every about year, Empire. Every year. I'm going to watch, watch some Empire like all week. Every year, I have to watch the six Star Wars movies, 
I have to watch all three Back to the Future movies, and I'm going to watch all three Ninja Turtle movies and Ghostbusters every year. All, th- all three? All three Turtle movies. The original three? Yeah, 1991 and then 93. Okay. I was just checking. Yeah, well, they go back in time. I liked that movie, man. It wasn't I liked bad. it. I don't know why people hate it. I liked it. I don't it. like the suits because they didn't go with um, the Henson Corporation. They mm-hmm. went with a, a different company and totally screwed up their suits. So I didn't know that. Yeah. But anyway. Because, I mean, you could see the actor's eyes. Like, that's, they uh, had, like, holes the size of, like, half dollars. Oh, yeah? Their bandanas. Well, I didn't like, notice that. it was that. horrible. I never noticed that. I'm going to check it out next time I watch it. It looks stupid. <clears throat> so that's that's all I got for episode 67 of the Spinner Rack. Um, you know, Comics Remixed, the hub for everything we do. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter at Comics Remixed, at the Spinner Rack. Next episode is our last one for the season. Yeah, our, our year in review. Um, make sure throughout the uh, the rest of the year and through the beginning of next year, you check out ComicsRemix.com for blogs. We're going to continue, hopefully, to uh, update the website. I like to say on a weekly basis, or excuse me, I like to say on a daily basis. Uh, probably weekly though you know, because we won't be doing the shows so anything that we need to get out would have to be in blog form Brian Junior I'm just letting you know I'm just putting that out there Alex Junior I think we covered the bases there <laughs> I think so <laughs> hopefully time time and logistics permitting we will be back in December to do a I can see that because we'll, a special our episode second season, our second year when we did that Christmas episode yeah. where we had that meeting at Carrie's. Mm-hmm. So, and that was like... Yeah, but that actually after. finished out the season, though. We were actually... Well, we had planned... Okay, I don't remember. Yeah, that... Uh, yeah, I'm almost positive we'll have to do a Star Wars. Oh, I, I, we have to, man. Otherwise... Well, well, we probably will have a few guests with us as well. That's... Whatever, man. That I think something like that deserves uh, a I think, table. yeah. I think Star Wars Episode Seven definitely deserves a round table. All right, so then join us back here next week. That should be out around the Christmas time. For the final episode of the season. Word. Our year in review. We're what pretty much year. just going to talk a, about, you know. A lackluster year. That's yeah, we'll, we'll get into for. that. That's all I'm saying. But anyway, uh, thanks for listening. See you back here next week. Peace.